Hi everyone, it's Susan Jones and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. Today I'm going to share two very simple at-home card games that you can use to practice math at home with your kids or your students. If you are a teacher, feel free to send this video along to your parents or your kids through Google Classroom, through email, however you're communicating with your students. And parents, if you are watching, then hello. I am Mrs. Jones, a former first grade teacher and K through two literacy teacher who now spends a lot of time sharing lessons, ideas, and activities here on YouTube. I also create curriculum for kindergarten first and second grade, and I've been sharing ideas over on my educational blog, susanjonesteaching.com, for about seven years now. So let's see what two games I have for you today. For both of these games, all you're going to need is one deck of cards. I'm going to insert a video of how to play each game, and I'm also going to go ahead and link a card up here with all of my other card games that you can play at home. There are so many mathematical games and concepts that you can work on with a simple deck of cards that right now, while we're stuck at home, this is a great time to kind of have fun and learn how to play these games and practice math at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead, like I said, I linked a card up there that you could click on after this, and I will also link in the description some of my favorite card games that you can play at home. The first game you can play is great for kindergarten and first grade students working on addition, and this game is called I Spy. For I Spy, you are simply going to take all of your deck of cards and you're actually going to put them out in a big grid. Now, I guess you don't need to use all of them if you wanna start with 40 and do a 10 by four grid, or if you wanna do 50 and do 10 by five, but you want to use plenty of the cards and really spread them out so everyone can see them on the table. Now, for this game, you're definitely going to need at least two players and you can play with more, but the game is simply called I Spy. Once all the cards are laid out on the table, you can go ahead and start. And you can say, I spy two cards that make the sum 12. Now, your partner or your student or your child, whoever is playing with you, they have to then go ahead and look at the cards on the table and try to find two cards that make the sum of 12. Once they find those two cards, they go ahead, remove them from the grid and add them to their pile and it's their turn. They can take a look and they can go ahead and play I spy by adding any two numbers that they want to. They might say I spy two numbers that make the sum nine. Then it's your job to go ahead and look through the grid, find two numbers that make the sum nine and your child or the student will go ahead and check that that's correct. This game is a real simple one that I love to play because you can also differentiate this in so many ways. So I think I said earlier that this was great for kindergarten and first grade, and if you use it the exact way I described in the video, then it is. But you can also ramp this up a bit. So for later in the year in first grade or for second grade students, you can also do three digit addition. So you can say I spy three cards that make the sum 17 or something like that. And you can also, instead of just using sums for addition, you can easily change this up for subtraction as well. And you can do so within the same game. So you might say on one turn, I spy a sum that equals 10. And then on the next turn, a student or your child might say, I spy a difference that equals three. I like that way to differentiate it because then the student really needs to listen for if you're saying sum or difference and they need to recognize what that means and how to find the answer. And another way to go ahead and make this a little trickier for your second and third grade students would be to use multiplication. So you can still play the same exact way. Instead of saying sum, students are looking for a product. So I love the game I Spy. It's easy, it's versatile, and it can be a lot of fun. And I'm not sure if I said this, but basically the object of the game is to continue going until all the cards are gone. So students are really seeing exactly how many sums, differences, products they can make with all the cards. All right, on to the second game. It is called Wild Jacks. So for this game, you're still gonna need a full deck of cards, except you're actually going to take out all of the kings and the, and the queens. You will take all of those out and you'll be left only with the four jacks in the deck. You will shuffle up that pile and you will need at least two players. And again, you can play with more for this. And this is how you will play. 
So the first way we're gonna play is the kindergarten and first grade version. So you'll flip over two cards and this will be your target number. Now to find out what target number it is, this is, we're gonna do eight plus five. So we'll add it together to get 13. So the target number here is 13 and now they can either count those up or they can go ahead and if they just know that eight plus five is 13, now you know that's the target number you're trying to get to. Now, each player is going to get five cards. So each player will receive five cards. Now with their five cards, it is their job to try to go ahead and make that target number in any way they can by adding or subtracting. So over here, I could say, oh, oh, 10 plus three. Here I have a 13. Or I might wanna use more of my cards and I might say, okay, wait a second, eight plus two plus three equals 13. Now over here, here I have a jack. So jack is really easy for me to just say, okay, I'm gonna say this is a wild, wild 10 plus three equals 13. Can I make 13 any other way? I have six plus seven, that equals 13. I will go ahead and take that over there. So now this player has one card left, two, and this player has two cards left. So now you go ahead and pass out more cards. They're still trying to get to that target number of 13 in the middle. They can only ever have five, so here we're gonna add some more. So same thing applies. They're going to look at their cards and they're going to see if they can make that target number 13 in any way that they can. I do see some wilds, so they should be able to do this. Let's see, a jack I know is a wild, so I'm gonna say a jack. I'm gonna try to use a lot of cards. I'm gonna say a jack and a six. So I'm gonna say the, the wild is a six another six to make 12 plus another one is 13. Boom, did it. What about over here? I'm going to say, oh, I have this wild again. So maybe I'll do a four plus a five equals nine plus two more is 11. And then I'll do a wild two to equal 13. There, I used a ton of cards. So the game just continues like that. You keep flipping five cards for each side as they try to make that target number. At the end of the game, once all the cards are gone from the pile that keeps flipping five, once they are all gone, then you count up how many cards you were able to make your target number with. So all those cards, all the different equations and different ways you made them, you'll go ahead and count them up and whoever has the most wins. So in that variation of the game, the students want to try, if they can, to use as many different numbers and different add-ins to make that target number. Now, if you have a kindergarten or beginning first grade student who's really just trying to go ahead and add numbers together, then don't worry too much about having them try a bunch of different add-ins. Just have them add two numbers together to try and find the sum. Now the second version of the game is a little bit trickier and students are trying to make a higher number because instead of adding the two numbers in the middle, they're just going to use that. So in the last example, it was eight and a five. So that would just be 85. And they have to try to use their cards to make that magic number. Let me just show you quickly how to play that way. Okay, so played in the same way as the other version, your two cards are in the middle, but instead of adding two and six together to make eight, we are going to try to make 26 as the target number. So each player gets their five cards, and for this, they can actually multiply, divide, add, subtract, they can do all of it at one time. So it's better for your older students. So here I can do two times six is 12, times two again, so 12 times two is 24, plus one is 25, plus another one is 26. Awesome, I used all five of my cards. Now let's take a look at the other one up here. I have a wild jack. Let's see, to make 26, I can do six times four is 24, plus my wild two, I'll use my jack as a two to make 26. 
And then you continue to flip five cards and keep playing until all the cards are gone. Now, I should also note that if you cannot make the target number with your five cards, either with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, any sort of which way, then what that student will do, that player will actually get rid of all five of their cards and discard them. They'll just go to the discard pile and get a brand new five cards to try again. And again, once all the cards are gone, each player is going to count up how many cards they use to make that target number. And that is how you play Wild Jacks. That's another card game I love because every single time you're gonna play that game with a partner, your target number will be completely different. I love it because your younger students can play by adding those two numbers together, or you can play by just using it as is, like that number 26 was, and students can kind of add, multiply, subtract, whatever they need to do to try to reach that target number. And that is how you play I Spy and Wild Jacks. I love both of these card games because they are easy, they practice some math skills, and you can play them at home, which is very beneficial right now. I also love them because once you step back into the classroom in a few months, then you can go ahead and play those there as well, and you can kind of add it to your little toolkit of math games to practice. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you are notified of every new week's video. And like I mentioned earlier, I will go ahead and leave a whole list of other card games that I've shared before that you can play in case you are looking for some more. See you next Sunday. Bye.